Hi, Tristan here. This is an example how one can use Python scripts to adjust FDS input files. The idea is that we have a cone calorimeter and we would like to adjust the surface temperature of this red area here in a way that we achieve 50 kW per square meter heat flux at this device in the center. We have set up an FDS input file, defined a surface for the heating element and set its temperature to 744 degrees Celsius because from the original cone calorimeter report we know that with 744 degrees Celsius, they achieved 50 kilowatt per square meter of heat flux. So after running the simulation, we are plotting the gauge heat flux over time and we see that our target value of 50 kilowatt per square meter was not reached. So then usually we could go back to the FDS input file, adjust the temperature to some different value that is obviously higher than the other one before, run the simulation again and figure out if the new value would then fit. However, that is a relatively tedious process, so it would be really nice if you could add, uh, automate this procedure. In the same directory where the FDS input file is located, I created an empty Python script. And at first I would like to read in just the in FDS input file. Therefore I grab the name, create a new variable that I call FDS input label. No, rather FDS file label. And then I want to read it in in a way that I get a list where each element in the list corresponds to one line of this input document. That is achieved with open. The file label or the path to the file but in this case, the script is located where the input file is located. Therefore, we do not need to provide a further pass because it's just looking in its environment or vicinity rather to figure out if the file is there that is requested. As we call it then, FDS input. And give it a new variable for the list, which is then the FDS input content. That will be then the red file here dot read lines as so this will then provide us the with the list this function here now from this list here we want to take the first element and want to print its value saving the file and now we can run python for this I opened the FDS terminal. Now I need to navigate to my FDS directory, or rather the directory of the FDS input file. Right click to copy the path. Then I can call Python and provide it as a parameter with the label of the Python script. Run the script and we see here it printed us the first value of the list which corresponds to the first line that we see in our FDS input file. So that seems to have worked. Now I would like to go over all the lines to find the line where the temperature front value is defined. So for this I'm using a for loop for line in the content list and I would like to figure out if TMP front is part of this inner element in the list. So therefore I put in a if statement. If TMP front is in the line, print the line. Save and test it out. There we have it, temp front 744 degrees Celsius. All right, now we have found the desired line and it would be nice to do some changes to it. There are multiple different ways how this can be achieved. I decided to just replace the whole line. For this, I copy the original line, including the spaces at the beginning, and create a new variable of it, which I will call new line. 
I define another variable which will hold the new value that is supposed to replace the 744 degrees Celsius. I will put it in front of the loop and call it just simply new value. And I give it some number, let's say 800. Um, let's make it a float. To replace the value that is written here to this new value, I can use the f strings. So to achieve that, I write a lowercase f in front of the string. And the part where the new value is supposed to be written into, I put in curly brackets, remove this value and just write the name of the variable here. For testing it out, we can just print this new line and then see how that looks like. Saving the file and run it again. And we see here the original one is this and it was changed to the 800 degrees as the dummy value that we put in. So now this particular line needs to be replaced in the original list FDS input content. For this we would also need to track the location of this line. This can be achieved by using enumerate which provides us with two values. One would be the position in the list, which I call ID, just line ID, and the value, which is the content of the line, in this case here, this TMP front and the, uh, the number. So we can take the list and take its location from the line ID and override it with our new line. Save. Since we have now conducted some changes to the line, it would be nice to write a new FDS input file. Again, we can use with open. Then we give it a file name, which we just take the original file label so we can just overwrite the file. But we give it another parameter w for write. We call it new FDS file. Oh, what is it? New FDS file. Oh. And this file will then get dot read lines, not read lines, write lines. And our content list that was changed. When we run this script now, we should see that this value here will be changed to 800 degrees Celsius. Try it out. We see there's new now 800 degrees Celsius as the value, but something seems to have gone wrong. The reason is that I forgot to include the new line character. Just put it in. And then I will remove this ramp back to its original position since we're overwriting this line. Save the FDS input, save the script, run it again. Okay, now it might be good to have some different value here that we see something changes. Try it again. Okay. So we can now adjust the number and the overall structure stays the same. Let's run FDS then. Usually we would go to the terminal, type in FDS and give it the file name and then run FDS. I just stopped it here. What we see in its uh, default configuration, FDS would start with one MPI process and four OpenMP threads. Maybe this may not be really necessary for our case here, or really it isn't necessary because we have just a couple of cells in this setup. So therefore it may be helpful to reduce the amount of resources used. So there we could use a different command, fds underscore local. Then with minus p, we can give it a certain number of MPI processes, which would be one. Minus o, we can adjust the open MP threads which I would also like to set to one. And then I give it the name of the FDS input file. Stopped it again. We see that there is the MPI process is now one and OMP num threads or the OMP threads is just one. However, since the overall procedure is supposed to be automatic, I'm not interested in typing this stuff in by hand or run these simulations manually because it was the whole point. We want to have it automatic. So 
what I would like to do is have this command being sent to the terminal from the script itself. So I copy that and go back to my script. I create a new string that contains the command and basically I'm using the f string methodology again. Put the uh, lowercase f in front and what I want to have here is the file name that we have used here to write the new um, file. You can just take the original one here or basically any other if you have something different. And now we want to have that whole thing to be sent to the terminal or the command line. So therefore we can call a different library or rather we import one which is the OS library. Import OS and then we call from OS system and give it this parameter. So now change it back to 700, maybe let's say 760. If we execute this script, we will read the original FDS input file, which is this one here, change the temperature and then launch FDS with this new file. Let's try it out. And it works. All right, let's think about how an automatic procedure could look like. I would like to define a target value and some space around this target value, which I call epsilon. If the result of the simulation is somewhere in between here, I consider the procedure to be successful. So what we see here would be the kilowatt per square meter. The parameter that is changed is the surface temperature TMP front. We define an upper and a lower limit for a sampling range from which we can pick the surface temperatures. As a first guess, we pick some random value in this range, maybe this one here, run the simulation and compare it to the goal. This value is too high, so we set this as our new upper limit for the sampling range. The remainder of the range we cut in half, one, two, three, four and a half and run the simulation again compared to the goal. This one is now too low. This becomes our new lower limit. Again, we cut the remaining range in half. It would be roughly here. Run the simulation compared to the goal. And now we are having successfully found a parameter that fulfills our condition. So now let's implement this into our script. Defining our basic parameters, we need to have an upper limit which we um, set to, let's say, 900 degrees Celsius. We have a lower limit that we say put to 760 degrees Celsius. We have a target value, which is supposed to be 50 kilowatt per square meter. There's an epsilon that I would like to set relatively narrow, so 0.002. And now we can use the target and the epsilon to define the um, upper target or lower target or max or min target, however you want to call it. Let's call it target max is the target plus the epsilon and the minimum target value is the target minus the epsilon. For the results, I want to read the DEVC file as a pandas data frame. So let's take the file name and import the pandas library. So then we can use pd.readcsv and load this file. I like to use the pandas data frames because with them you can use the column headers to address the data series within a column. So for instance, if we define a device and give it a, a device ID, this is the column header that is present in the device file. Here, radiative heat flux, gate heat flux. FDS outputs in the first line the units for the individual columns. To tell the read CSV function to skip the first line and take the second line as headers, we provide the respective parameter, which is header equals one for the second line. 
Let's store the data frame as a variable, the EVC underscore df. So if you want to access this column, we can just take its label. and type it here, basically the same way as we would do it with a dictionary. The simulation is conducted for 30 seconds that we see here. And the surface temperature is being ramped up within the first 8 seconds of the simulation. Since the result might be a bit noisy, it may be a good idea to average out the steady state. Let's say we start from 10 seconds until the end to the 30 seconds. Since we are recording basically every half a second a frame, we can start taking the data from the 20th entry onward, which is then from 10 seconds onward until the end of the simulation. To average this data series, I want to use NumPy, so let's import this library, import NumPy SNP, and then use the NumPy.average for this data series and store the result in a variable that we call rvlg. Let's implement a check to see if the simulation result is close to a target. So we take an if statement. If the average value is smaller than our target maximum, where is the target max? And if the average is greater than the target minimum, then we have successfully found a surface temperature that produces our desired result. So we could, for instance, print success. And now we adjust the sampling range. Elif, the average is greater than our target max. We will set the upper limit to the new value, which is the surface temperature. And if the average is lower than the um, target minimum, the lower limit becomes the new value. We can now put in also some messages if we like, like, um, I don't know, new max or something. and uh, new min. To get our new guess value, we take the upper limit and subtract from it the lower limit. Divide that uh, in half and add it on top of the lower limit. And this becomes our new value. To automate the process, we need to have this block of code here repeated multiple times. This is accomplished with a while loop that will be repeated if a certain condition is true. Since true is true forever, this loop will run forever. But at some point, we may have found our solution, so we want to have it um, stop the process. Therefore, in the if condition where we were checking if we have were successful, we enter the break command, which will stop the loop. However, we may end up in a situation where our algorithm is not able to find a solution and therefore it will really run forever. To uh, counter that, we can set up some maximum number of iterations. Let's say 100. And we also introduce a counter to keep track of how often the loop has been conducted. For this, we set up a variable that we just call counter and we initialize it with zero. Now, each time the loop is executed, we advance the counter by one. Then we add another if condition to check if the total amount was reached.
And we could also print a respective message here. Now we are only missing our initial guess value, which we hard coded here to 760, but I would like to have it randomly chosen between the upper and the lower limit. So I import the random library and then let it uniformly sample within our sampling range. Between the lower limit and the upper limit. All right, now let's try it out. Hmm, it appears something went wrong here in line 66. Let's check it out. So this is where we calculate our new um, value. So we want to have the upper limit, the lower limit. So we determine the lower limit with new la weight. That should be the new value, not the new line. Okay, that makes sense. Let's correct that one and try it again. Ah, oh, nice. It seems to work now. Since the script seems to work now, I will clean it up a little bit and also add in some comments to remember what each of the individual code sections is supposed to do. For instance, I don't think that we need to have these lines here printed anymore. And we can start here with um, read the FDS file. This also we don't need anymore. We can have some space here, some space here. Generate the initial guess. Set the max durations. Conduct the search. Go over the um, FDS input content line by line. Search for desired pattern. create a new line then we want to override the existing line and then we want to write the FDS file the new FDS file run the FDS simulation Read the result. Here we have finished our search successfully. Defining a new, um, new, what is it, upper limit. Here we set a new lower limit. Here we stop for the iterations. Uh, which also means um, here we want to count the iterations. And here we generate a new value, new guess value. In the end, we could also print the result and the target to see where we are at. Alright, now let's use our script to find the desired parameter. 
And here we go, see you on the other side. The search concluded successfully, we are really close to our desired target value. I hope this little script um, helps you and gives you some ideas how you can tackle your own uh, problems. And finally, I wish you a nice day.